Video Tommy play. I think two thousand dollars. I made 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 two thousand dollars. I've never heard that name. Well, yeah, it's a little bit. Oh. Is the writing of the poetry be like they're writing Adelia? They go to the board or they tell the girl? No, like that means that they're like writing other people. Sometimes Josh will have like the first one, the last one. It would be like writing. I remember one of my friends wanted to do this. He was on my ass and he was like, fine, I'm not fucking into you. I used to make, I used to call it writing this. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to write this. And he was like, so how much writing do you actually do? And I was like, no. But that's what I'm, I'm talking, talking about. You write, you fucking put it to my goddamn birthday and you got her. Like, I'm not writing anything. Oh my god, that's crazy. crazy. I was like, yeah. what happened yesterday while you were? So I went and I just, I, I walk in to like, this Mason was sitting with, with this trainee, and the trainee was like doing the whole thing, and he was just watched them and like, hey, if something is going wrong, bro, <laughs> he changed me walking. The guy is sharing his screen as he's like, Hey, what's up, Lindsay? Hey. 
Hey, Lizzie, can you hear me? Hello? I cannot hear you. All right, I guess you can probably still see it. I'm just gonna play the video, but um, yeah, today's just a video. Okay, sounds good. All right. All right, quick mic check, can you hear me? Yep. Yes? Okay. Thumbs up, Ashlyn. I can see you. All right, cool. All right, so. Oh, that's good. How's he doing? Pretty good. <laughs> so today we're going to go over proactively handling rebuttals. Proactively handling rebuttals. Uh, where to do it in a presentation. Give us some tips and pointers and. Um, we should be pretty quick today with the information. So uh, we could do probably about 40, 45 minutes, give it a little break and then wrap up with a half hour, or we could just run right through it for a good hour, 15 minutes or so, maybe hour and 20 and just get done. So however you guys are feeling, what do you guys think? Want to run right through, take a little break? Yeah, we can run. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah. Right, yeah. We'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, no, you don't need the rebuttal sheet. Uh, um, so what we're going to go over is proactively handling rebuttals today. Okay. So obviously, uh, when you give your presentation, uh, there's at the end of the presentation, you're going to get some rebuttals sometimes. And after they give you the rebuttal, you can handle it, but that's more of a reactive approach, right? So we don't want to wait until they give us this, this rebuttal and then have to like come back at it with a, uh, our, you know, our rebuttal back to them, which is trained right in your script. You know, I want to think about it. I can't afford it and I don't need it. Those are the three biggest rebuttals that you're going to get. So once again, it's, it's, I want to think about it. I can't afford it and uh, I don't need it. Those are what most people are going to tell you at the end. So we have to make sure that throughout the presentation, we proactively handle those and we address that stuff. And, and they say you want to beat it up front before they ever give it to you. So, and the philosophy behind this is, is, is uh, a little different too. It took me a while to really get this. I always thought that, yeah, you want to beat them so they don't give them to you. Because once they give them to you, now you got to react and try and fight and combat. It's better if they just never even give you the rebuttal in the first place. And that's what, that's basic, you know, uh, idea of it. it's like a more of a barbaric idea so when you think more intellectually about it though which was this was i i learned this maybe seven years ago so i've been doing sales for probably seven years and it took me about seven years to really 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 know why is it so important to not even get a rebuttal and i was like you don't want to get a rebuttal because if you don't get a rebuttal you're going to make the sales i thought that's what it was and that is but the reason that you do not want to get a rebuttal is because 
as soon as that client says whatever that rebuttal is, as soon as they say that in the, into the air and into the universe, it now exists, you know? And you don't really even want that in the universe. You don't even want those words to ever get out. And what happens now is, you know, if I say like, I can't afford this to you, now I am going to feel inclined to prove to you that I can't afford it. You know what I mean? Once I say words, I'm going to start to feel inclined to back up those words to prove it. Yeah. You know, and if my wife was sitting next to me and I told you I can't afford it, now I'm going to even feel more inclined because she just heard me say it to you and I, I can't look like a liar. You know, I said, we can't afford it. We can't afford it. But so you don't ever really even want them to say that I need to think about, you You know, whatever those words are, then they're going to feel inclined to, to, to prove it. Right. Um, so uh, what are, what's the approach, you know, so I'm going to give us uh, the, the areas and uh, I'm going to give us um, some good systems, just basic, easy system to remember uh, to put in place. Okay. So this, this, this is going to be, we're going to, um, we'll get started with, with the Steve Greer method to handling rebuttals. Steve Greer is the CEO of our company. And I was privileged to travel um, from Pittsburgh to New Jersey one time. And uh, all the uh, a handful of like some of the SGAs that were, you know, available on the East coast, uh, went to, to visit the agency all at the same time and shared best practices. And this was when he was an, an, an SGA at the time. And, and he taught us the, this method to handling rebuttals. And I'll never forget it because I thought it was genius and it's perfect. So, and it's easy to teach. So it's easy to learn. And it's easy to teach. So I like that because if you ever, you know, want to get into leadership and management and you want to kind of help your people handle a, a rebuttal or something, this will just give you, instead of giving them, all right, yeah, there's just 72 things you got to do to handle the rebuttal. That's going to be hard for them to remember. If you, if you could give them like a three-step method, a lot easier, right? So, so it's a three or four step method. Depends on how you want to, want to uh, categorize it. Okay. But we'll go through this together. So, so throughout the presentation, there, there's a built-in script, okay? And in the script, there are, are parts of the presentation when you address these rebuttals proactively with the client. The, 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 the first um, one we're going to talk about is I don't need it. When do we address I don't need it? With the client would that be in the will when you're asking them whether or not they have life insurance when you get to the will part and you're asking them if they have life insurance uh that's when we get that information out there on the table for sure um but uh that's not that that's not what i'm looking for so there's a part in the presentation where we address um the, 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 I don't need it a little. So I'll just get to it. No, no, it's even before that, before. It. So at the beginning, when you tell them why we are here, that kind of, that also uh, beats because the biz, biggest thing that they're going to hit, why do they say, I don't need it. Right. Why are they going to tell you they don't need it? I, I looked into this guys. The biggest reason why the, the clients think that they don't need it is because they think they already got it. Cause they'll tell you this, I don't need it. I already have this stuff through work. That's the biggest one. So they're going to say, I don't need it. I already have this stuff through work. So at the beginning, if you remember, uh, we say, so Joe and Mary, let me just catch up to speed on why we are here today. You know, your president, John Smith contracted through our company, American income to make sure that you and all of the members had guaranteed permanent life benefits. The problem and concern that they are running into, and remember, problem and concern, we got to have those dropping throughout our presentation because they're not going to care about the solution 
until they care about the problem. So, you know, the old saying is they say, don't even sell the solution. You got to sell the problem because if they're actually bought in that is, is a, this is a real problem, you know, then they're, they're going to they're going to care about the solution. And, and what happens in sales is we get so caught up in our product. We get so caught up in our solution and we're so good at selling our product and we're so good at, at highlighting it and selling the solution. But remember, the client doesn't even care about the solution until they know that there is a problem. That's me. That's like me trying to sell you four, right? But we didn't even know that there was a problem two plus two. You didn't, you didn't even know two plus two was your problem. And I'm just trying to get you four, right? So I got to get you to, you know, believe in that problem. So anyways, you know, you say, Joe, Mary, let me just clap a speed on why we're here today. Your president, John Smith, contracted through us, American Income, to make sure that you and all of your members have guaranteed permanent life benefits. The problem and concern that they've been running into is that um, most of our members, they have group coverage through their employer. Joe and Mary, you know when you work with a company, they, they typically provide the employees with benefits. At least most companies do. And sometimes those benefits, it's, there's life insurance involved. Well, what typically happens whenever you leave that company with all of those workplace benefits? That's right. They go, they'll say like they go away or something. I'll go, I guess I'll say, uh, let's say that you quit, get fired, or, or, or you retire. What typically happens to your benefits then? That's right. They go away, right? So for most of our members, this becomes a problem because now they're at an age when they really need their benefits and they just lost all of their benefits. So your president, and right now, guys, we've contracted and we work with over 30,000 different unions, credit unions, and associations worldwide. And we, what we do, the main thing we do for them is we provide them with all of their guaranteed permanent life benefits. So today, Joe and Mary, this will be your enrollment period. I'll make sure I answer all of your questions and go over all your benefits for you today. And, uh, and, and if it makes sense, uh, we need to make sure that we get your American income life paperwork taken out and get your life benefit or your American take taken care of so you can get your permanent life benefits as well. So at the beginning, the, they, the, I literally tell them, like, do you know how you have workplace benefits? You know how you have that stuff? And they're like, yeah, like, well, guess what? That's why we're here today. That's the problem. The problem is you have coverage through work. That's the problem. So at the end, they can't say to you, or they shouldn't be saying to you at least, they shouldn't say, well, this is all good, man. I appreciate this information that you went over with me, but I just don't really need this right now because I have stuff through work. You say, whoa, you must have missed the whole reason that your president even contracted through us. It's cause you have stuff through work. That's the problem. That's why our company exists, you know? If everybody had guaranteed benefits, our company wouldn't have no place to be in. We wouldn't be in business right now, you know? So it's that whole mindset, that process. So we, you know, if you address it with them up front, they understand it. And then you say to them, Joe and Mary, whenever you quit, get fired or retire, what typically happens to your benefits? Let's say you leave your company, what happens? And then what are they, 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 they tell you, oh, I, I lose my benefits. So, so they told you, you like, so at the end of the presentation, you, they can't be like, well, I don't need this. I'm like, what you told me you lose your benefits. What are you talking about? You know, it doesn't, they won't even say it. Cause they already said that they told you that. Right. It's different if I say it to them. So you guys got to know this when you do your presentations in general, there's two ways to tell them something I could tell them, or they could tell me. And it's the same thing. Like, yes, for instance, so Joe, and Mary, whenever you work with a company, they provide all the employees with benefits. Well, typically they do that. Most companies do. But whenever you leave a company, let, you know what they do with your benefits? They actually, they, they go away. Say you quit, you get fired or retire. The members, they lose their benefits immediately or maybe like 30 days will go by and they lose all their benefits. Does that make sense? Okay. See how I just told you? All you did is just go, you're right. It's not the same. So I could, I could get you to tell me through it's 
it's a it's a loaded question. You are it's it's not like it's an open. I'm like, oh, I hope he says the right answer. It's a loaded question. I've asked this a million times, and every single person goes, you lose them. You know, I said, what happens after you you quit your fire retire? You you what you have that you, you exactly you lose your benefits, right? And that was the biggest problem and a major concern. You know, that's why we're here today. That's why your president contracted to us. I know you have group benefits. So that's the first thing. Okay. Now they also may get that all and you still can get, I don't need it at the end rebuttal. So you still can get those. But if you handle this proactively and you do this part the right way, um, it should handle the majority of the ones that you get. Okay. But also if at the end, the client says to you, they want to, th they, they don't need it. Right. All you do is you go like this. You, 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 number one, you, 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 you understand, so you relax and reflect and you say, I understand and I agree with you. Whatever they say, I don't care what they say, right? I, I understand and I agree. The number one rule of sales is this, when you get a rebuttal, what's the number one rule of sales? Always agree, always agree. You never go, no. <laughs> you don't say no to a client. You don't tell people no and you're trying to sell them something. That's not a good thing to say no, right? So you agree with them. Uh, and, and it's hard sometimes. They're, they're, yeah, I just, you know, I really, I, I don't need this right now, man. I have stuff to work. Okay, yeah, I can definitely understand with that. And I agree with you. You know, I definitely I agree. You, you do have stuff to work. What am I going to disagree? I agree. You have stuff to work, right? However, if you could remember back um, when I went over at the beginning how your president contracted through our company and the main reason was because everybody already has those group coverage, but when you quit get fired or retire, what typically happens, that's why we work. With, so, so the key guys is you can go back to where you beat the rebuttal and remind them of it if you beat the rebuttal. But let's say you never beat that rebuttal proactively, right? And then at the end, they give you the rebuttal. You can't say, well, you remember how we were, when I was going over with you, the, the, the reason why your president contracted through us and how, you know, you, you're not permanent benefits. And that's why we have, the per, per, like, you know, remember how you can't go over that with them and remind them of it if you never hit it in the first place. So hitting it in the first place, number one, proactively beats the rebuttal. It cuts down on the chances of them giving you that rebuttal at the end. But if they even still do give it to you, it gives you that spot to just go back and remind them of it you know, and uh, allows you to continue to move. So I'll give you the three-step, you know, process when I, when I hit uh, in, in a minute here. But I kind of already did, okay? I already gave it to you. But the first place we beat it is what? Right there in the uh, beginning part when it's, I call that why we are here. The why we are here part. So when you hit them with the why we are here and just telling them that, now if it's a um, child safe, if it's a will kit, you still tell them why we are here. But instead, you'll drop the police unions. As Joe and Mary, uh, biggest reason that we're, we're out working, you know, as clients, we work with over 30,000 different unions, credit unions, and associations. One of them is the International Union of Police Association, the American Federation of Teachers, and the American Firefighters Association. Uh, um, we, uh, we work with them uh, to get the child safety kits out to the community. And uh, our company is 100% used. So we work with these organizations and we provide them with their permanent benefits. And what happens is the president contract through us and I just go through the whole thing again. You just lead the beginning part in. There's like, do from the child safety program, we're with the International Union Police Associations, we're 100% union. And then you go into the same thing you normally would say. With the will kit, you say the same exact thing. You know, we're with the International Will Kit Program and our company is 100% union. Here are the problems we're running into with people who are retiring and, leave, you know, uh, losing their benefits. So um, that's the first part. The sec, so I don't need it, right? What are the other two rebuttals we gotta get to now? We gotta make sure we beat, I can't afford it and I wanna think about it. So the next part in your presentation, if you go through now, is we do all, we, 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 uh, we, we um, walk in and, and we build rapport. So hey, you build rapport with the client. After you build a rapport with the client, then we tell them why we are here. After we tell them why we are here, then we go into their no cost benefits. My transition from the why we are here to the no cost benefits, the segue for me is the intro video. 
So I would, I play the intro video. You guys do whatever you want, but I play it because it, it makes me look like you know, I'm with a real company, especially a POS because they never see, they're never going to see a commercial. They see commercial for all the other companies out there, but they never see a commercial for our company. So I tell them, this is the only thing you're ever going to see. The only video, only, only like commercial, if you want to call it for our company and for your life insurance company. Which video is it? The intro video. Yeah, it should, it should just be like, an, yeah. I think it's just called intro video. Yeah. So it's the first video you play. And then after the intro video, plus that gives me time to just chill for a minute, <laughs> catch my bearings, get my stuff ready, think about my next few moves I'm about to make. Right? Maybe that is the one Richard Trump got. I think Richard Trump got is the video, the intro yeah. video. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that one is. Yeah. So after the Richard Trump, after that video plays, um, then I say, so your first no cost benefit is your, and then whatever it is, if it's the A, B, and D certificate, go over that. Then the child safe, then the will kit or family information guide, and the AIL plus card, give them their, give them their benefits. After that, then we go into what? The difference between whole life and term, right? After the difference between whole life and term, then we go through the needs analysis. And right after the needs analysis is when I say, um, uh, now, Joe and Mary, this is your mandatory read-off letter. On your EF, when you click next after the um, uh, needs analysis, so after you fill out the needs analysis and you click next, what's going to pop up on your screen is the mandatory read-off letter. So it's right on your screen. So if you're virtual, you just share that screen, show it to the client. If you're in a home, you just take your computer, turn it, and space it right to the client so they can see it. And you say, please follow along as I read this off to you. This is your mandatory read off letter. And then I just read a dear valued member, you know, the benefits to be available, be being made available to you today or on a voluntary basis to cooperation of your organization and uh, which is the uh, operating engineers, local 346 and American Income Life. American Income Life has longstanding history of working with its groups and its, ben and its members providing them with permanent life benefits and supplemental benefits. These benefits um, can, uh, you know, they're, they're not meant to replace, they can complement or help out with every, whatever it says in that thing, right? Okay, and, and then it says, please listen to the representative, which is me, uh, as they go through your benefits for you today, all right? And then after I read them the letter, then what do I do? What do you think we do? We take the letter down so they can see me again. So if it was, in person, I would take the laptop and I would turn it away and set it to the side. So it's not even in the picture anymore. It's just me and them, right? If it's on the screen, I screen share. And this is where you don't look at yourself talking. This is a big thing. Look at the camera. Certain parts of the presentation, you're going to want to really make sure you look into the camera. This is where I would look at the camera. And I'd say, so basically, Joe and Mary, uh, what, they're, what they're saying is that if as I go through these benefits and you guys are nodding your head, you're thinking these are great benefits and you can see why they set this up. It fits the need for you and your family. They're going to ask you to try and qualify today while we're here. But on the flip side, as I go through the benefits and you're nodding your head and you think they are great benefits, but it just doesn't fit a need for you and your family today, they're going to actually ask you to try and not qualify for the benefits. Either way, though, they're asking us to make a decision today, just in fairness to all the other members that are waiting to enroll into the program. And the nice thing is, is uh, they're pretty much a no brainer. So you're gonna know one way or not, whether it fits a need for you and your family. They just didn't want me to go through everything. And then you, you, you say something silly, like uh, you, you wanted to think about it or something like that. Does that make sense, Joe? Does that make sense, Mary? And after I'm done with everything, um, just, uh, just as feedback to go to your president and, and feedback to go to the organizations that we work with, uh, I, I just ask you if you wouldn't mind giving a quick review when I'm done. I'll actually uh, have you just hop on a Google and we can just give a quick review when we're done. If you guys wouldn't mind that, I really would, would appreciate that. And then that's that's how you handle proactively. I want to think about it. So the question is that review? Is it on the Javina website on Google? Yeah, you go to Google and type in uh, the Vina agency and then and then you just go to you make a, make a Google review. Yeah. Um, and by the way, if you guys want to do a Google review, like from as an agent, if you haven't done one, uh, definitely do one, uh, but do it not from the office. 
supposedly they check your IP addresses and they know stuff like that. I don't know how they know any of that stuff, but they do. So they, they just don't want a bunch of like, get all your employees in here and lock them in a room and tell them you're going to fire them if they don't write, you know, good reviews on Google. So, um, so anyways, uh, do it when you go home or when you're at a, somewhere else. And, and also if you could ask your friends and family too, you know, to do that as well and give you a review, it could, you know, I mean, it doesn't have to be real. It could be your, your uncle can just say, Hey, my, my nephew, or, you know, you don't even have to say my nephew, you just say, you know, uh, John Smith, you know, is a great representative. He serves families really well. And he's one of the hardest working people we know. Right? Whatever. You, you can get five or six or 10 Google reviews for yourself just by asking your friends that, hey, hook me up with a quick review, you know, and it just makes you look stronger with all these five stars when they type in your name on, on, on there, you know, because that's what they do these days. It's sad enough to sad, but it's the truth. So you just got to play the game, whatever the game is, it's the game. And, um, they, uh, your resume is pretty much, you know, what they go on Google and type your name in these days. Like, let me Google them. I'm going to Google them and see what comes up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I Google and YouTube, YouTube, everything. I'm a big, like YouTube. I'm on YouTube university, man. I'm on it. <laughs> so, but you got to decipher and know who's saying what and what you're getting from what resources and everything. Um, but, but yeah. Uh, so, so, you know, your social media accounts, um, you know, you definitely want to clean those up if, if they don't look good, you know, and I've had some people that, that worked here that used to be like hip hop stars, you know what I'm saying? And they, they, they had to clean up a little bit, you know, it wasn't, if their, if their client went on there, they might get kind of worried or something. Look, <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? So you just want to, you know, keep, keep, keep it, keep that conscious. That's all people are going to look at your Instagram, your Facebook, if you put yourself out there, you know, and, and when you get into sales, it's, it's, there's no religion. There's no politic talk. You can't talk politics, can't talk religion. It's just, it's just what you got to do. You got to accept that, you know, and, um, uh, whatever they say and move on to the, yeah, well, you know, if, if I, if I go up and, and I, and I start making posts all over social media about, you know, um, everybody needs to be Democrats or everybody needs to be Republicans. Like, well, if I tell everybody that we need to be Democrats and then the 50, you know what? then every person who's Republican is going to hate me. And I just lost 50% of everybody. And then if I say, well, I'm really a, 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 a Republican, then all the Democrats are going to hate me. I just lost 50% of everybody, you know? So I don't even deal with that shit. I don't even deal with it. You know, my whole thing this year was like, uh, who do you vote for? If you don't know who to vote for, what do you do? Like, that's a real problem. What do you do? Flip a coin? I don't think that's right. Do I not vote? I don't think that's right. Do I just vote and pick somebody? I don't know if that's right because I don't feel like either one's right. What do you do? Nobody got an answer for me. Nobody got an answer. What do you, you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Yeah. So I don't even get into it. That's like literally talk about being middle of the road. I'm so middle of the road. Like I don't even, I don't even know. I don't even care. <laughs> I had people ask me that before. Like, well, what is your dad? I'm sorry, sir. I'm out of Seattle. I don't really pay attention to politics. So I don't really know who I would vote for, what I, what what area I would go into. Yeah. I live my life on a daily basis. So let me let me go. That's it. Just tell me you don't know, do a politics. So, um, so anyways, the second part to beat the rebuttals, the second one we did. I don't need it. Now we just did. You know, I want to think about our. You know, I want to think about it. We proactively handle that. Okay. And here's what's cool. I don't have to teach you nothing. Yeah, that's in your script. You already know that, right? We don't have to do no work on that today. That's par you, you read the paragraph, you read the, 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 the mandatory read off letter, and then you give them a good paragraph after, right? I like adding that line in there to just say, you know, um, it's, let me go through it. After you tell them uh, so either way, they want you to make decision today. And, uh, they, they just, uh, they, they, uh, uh, you want to make decisions today, yes or no, and finish all their members waiting to enroll. Oh, and the nice thing is, this part right here, we said the nice thing is, it's pretty much a no-brainer. By the time I go through everything, you're going to know one way or not whether it fits a need for me and my, for you and your family. They just didn't want me to go through everything. And at the end, you say something silly, like you wanted to think about it, right? So that makes sense. So, you know, adding that part in at the end and then fall, <gasps> following it up with, um, the Google review allows you to change topic on them, you know? So it's not like they're going to be sitting there and like, what do you mean? You're going to, you know, like I immediately change the topic on them. 
and I go right into it. And then also we're going to ask these a quick Google review at the end, just to give feedback to your president, just to make sure I didn't hop on a Zoom call, you know, and start trying to put on a rap concert or something for you guys, you know, <laughs> whatever. So, um, uh, so that's that. Now, immediately after that, I go right into handling the, 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 um, the pay, the money. So I'm like, we're going to get two of them out of the way right now. We're going to get, I want to think about it and I can't afford it. So I can't afford it is I'll give you two of them. Okay. The one that I use, um, it most is the first one. And it basically it's so simple. It just says, Joe and Mary, they always make me ask, this is your segue. This is your transition from the paragraph after the mandatory read off letter from the Google review, from Google review to, I can't afford it. The line is this, they always make me ask. Okay. And then you're saying, if you were to set aside $5 out of every hundred that you took home to protect your family. So you say if out of every hundred dollars you took home, if you set aside $5 out of every hundred to protect your family, would that take food off your table or drastically change your lifestyle? No, most members say it wouldn't either. They just didn't want to show you something that you need, but you wouldn't be able to afford. So if you set aside $5 out of every $100 that you took home and you set that aside to protect your family, would that take food off your table or drastically change your lifestyle? Most members say that it wouldn't. They just didn't want to show you something that you need, but you, that the, but you, uh, something that you need, but you wouldn't be able to afford. And then I just keep moving from there. Now, the other way you can handle it is the hour power. So that's the $5 question. The other one's called the hour power, which you probably heard before. You know, it's the whole premise of it. Founded on hour power. And you say, so Joe and Mary, what's the segue again? They always make me ask. They always make me ask. So whether you do the $5 question or whether you do the hour power, you're always going to start it out with, they always make me ask. If you let's imagine you walked into work on Monday and the boss pulled everybody aside and said that everybody is going to get an extra hour this week in our pay. So instead of 40, we're going to all take home 41 hours. Well, Joe, that might feel pretty good taking home an extra hour for the week, but we're probably not going to run home and tell the family. Let's take a trip to Disneyland. And when we come back, we're gonna go buy a new Cadillac because I got one extra hour in my pay this week, right? We're probably not gonna be able to do that. Now on the flip side is uh, imagine you walked into work and the boss put everybody aside, but he said, now we're all gonna get cut back by an hour. So instead of 40, we're all taking home 39 hours, okay. That might make a little bit of a difference, taking home one hour less for the week. But we're probably not going to run home, have a family meeting and tell them we got to cancel the vacations this year, sell the car, all because we lost an hour. So, Joe and Mary, would you, wouldn't you agree that whether we got one extra hour for the week in our pay, or whether we got cut back by an hour for the week and we lost an hour, either way, does it make that big of a difference? Great, they figured they could take that hour that doesn't make a difference, one hour, they figured they could take that hour and they could put it towards something that would make a difference. And that's the, the hour of power one. So it depends on how it's how you're feeling, but whatever your your go to is, whatever you're stronger at. But if it's a union guy, girl, family, it's a union family, and they are getting paid hourly, and they are getting paid weekly, and it's union, I would go with the hour power all day. You know, it just makes so much sense. It's easy for them. It's a good story to tell. You know. Not going to be a big difference, so I could cover that gap of that hour, that amount that I would have made with the IRS, right? And it would cover that insurance gap. 
Exactly. So you put them in that mentality, like, okay, I could spend an extra hour in the zone. Yeah, and it puts them in a mentality, it's just an hour worth of wages. You know, so it takes it out of the money numbers. Like before, we're just talking about $5. This takes the money aspect out of it and goes strictly to hourly, you know? So it's a different mindset a little bit too. Okay. All right. So now we got them, guys. And here's the cool thing. What I just taught you is nothing you already know. It's all in your script pretty much. You know, it's all. But what, what I want to do is review that and go over the importance of why and where, where we're saying these things why we're saying these are the three parts in your presentation where you proactively handle those rebuttals. And now once you handle them proactively, now when we get the rebuttal, um, we're, we're going to have some system to rely on to get us back on the sale. So the system is always number one, when they give you a rebuttal, well, the system is, it's how, that's why it's like, I don't know how many steps it really is. Okay. Because I think the first step in the system is is to proactively handle the rebuttals during the presentation if you don't do that then you can't do no nothing else so step one is proactively handle the rebuttal in the presentation now once they give you the rebuttal here's the system once they give you a rebuttal here's the system first thing we do once they give us the rebuttal this will be step two or whatever you want to put it on here. But the first thing we do once we get the rebuttal is remember, it's always relax. Relax and you, you agree and proceed. Agree and proceed. So, so the key words here are this, ready? I understand what you mean. I understand where you're coming from. I agree with you. Lou, would you say those words to him? I agree. I understand where you're coming from. I agree with you. And here's a, you want to add a great one in here? Ready for the topper? Uh, most of my best clients felt the same way. Hit them with those three, man. I agree with you. You definitely makes makes sense. I understand. Makes sense. You can say it makes sense. I understand. I agree. Most of my best clients, they felt the same way. Right? So you agree with them. Um, then you go like this and you go, um, but however, however, if you could remember uh, back in the presentation when I was explaining to you that 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 letter, the mandatory read off letter, and, and basically how they wanted us to um, make sure that, you know, by the end uh, that, that we made a decision, yes or no, just in fairness to all the other members waiting to enroll. That's why they tried to make it like a no-brainer for us, Joe and Mary. So, so I understand, like, you want to think about it, right? But, but if you really think about it, they've already really thought about it for us. That's why they put this in place and did this on the enrollment basis. Okay, so the, 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 so where I'm at here, I'm going a little on script, but um, after we agree, the next thing is what? Go back to, if you could remember when I, if you could remember when we went over and you go back to the presentation where you went over it and literally repeat it to them again because they didn't hear it the first time. Well, if you know your script, that part's easy. You just say it again, right? And remember, you're allowed to say things more than once in a home. Don't think like, oh, I already said that to him once. You have to say things three, four, sometimes five times the same person within a 20 minute time frame for them to even get it sometimes. But then they get it and it works and that sells, it's communication. So we go back to the presentation where we handled it, okay? And then what we do is we go like this. We say, um, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that you get your foot in the door, but keep it comfortable at the same time. Or you could say like this, uh, the most important thing, Joe and Mary, is making sure that we get your foot in the door with the benefits today, but keep it comfortable at the same time. So you could say it either way. You could say, um, so what, what we're going to do today for you, I love saying that, what we're going to do today you know, you're taking control and telling them. So what we're going to do today is we're going to make sure that you get your foot in the door with the benefits, 
but you keep, we'll, we'll make sure we keep them comfortable at the same time. For you. And you're nodding your head, you know, or you could tell me other, you know, like, like, like I said, is the most important thing is making sure that you get your foot in the door with the benefits today, but making sure we keep them comfortable for you at the same time. And then that's your assumption and your transition back into the sales that kind of where you left off at when they gave you that rebuttal, you know? So um, that's the, the method. So if you like, imagine you're in a home and somebody tells you, I want to think about it. What would you do? So we'd agree, right? First thing we'd agree, then what? Setting. Yeah. So go back, remind them of where you guys already talked about that. And then what? Um, assess the problem. And really make sure that they see where the problem is. Yep. And then, then what the, then assume the sale, just assume the sale. So it's, that's why I said it's like three, but four steps. Cause really the first step is you got to proactively handle them in the presentation. But after that, there's three steps. Then once they give you a rebuttal is we calm down, agree, proceed, make sense. I understand most of our clients, most of my best clients have felt the same way, right? Then after we tell them that and say, but if you can remember back in the presentation, so step number two, after, you know, three slash is you get to where you went over it. And then the last final step, we call that assuming the sale. And it's just hitting it on with that line and letting them know the most important thing is getting your foot in the door today, but keeping them comfortable at the same time. And you can go right into uh, either reducing them down, you know, so Joe and Mary, I know that you, you know, the, the, the uh, expert simulator, I know that, you know, your family really needs this coverage here is what we are talking about for your family. However, to get your foot in the door today and still make sure, because later on down the line, once you have your foot in the door and you own the benefits, you can always make adjustments to your program down the line. So if, if later on we need to add some more benefits for you, if you want to add some family members down the line, we can always do that too. But the most important thing, we'll make sure you get your foot in the door today. So instead of doing the $100,000 of coverage, we could actually get your foot in the door with a $50,000 of coverage, okay? And uh, that'll still make sure that it's comfortable for you at the same time. So, uh, so you know, I'll just start filling out the application again. You know, so you get right back into the app. You don't have the same of what you're getting, what you're not getting. Yeah. In most times. You're right. Once you got that, that's set on the stone and you can't afford it six months from now because you got into an accident or something like that, or your car broke down, you can't pay for it. Yeah. And then when you're financially a little bit more stable, you can just give me a policy. Don't even have to go for the entire thing. Just tell me how much you want and I'll pay the guy. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Right. So what we call that, guys, is, is and this is the terminology you can use because it's, it's, it's good when you say these, this terminology because it, it shows that you're professional, your industry, you do it all the time. And stuff. But one of them is, is, is member-owned and member-controlled permanent and portable benefits. You know, most of our members, they don't own or control any of their benefits and the benefits they have are not portable or not permanent and definitely not portable. So they quit, get fired, retire. They're really gone forever. They lose them forever. So these benefits, they're member owned and member controlled. You own these and you control these. You can increase them, decrease them. You have them forever. Nobody can ever take them away from you. Once you qualify for these today, they're in place forever, which means today, tomorrow, when you're 99 years old, wherever, however, uh, whenever, wherever, however, you end up passing away, this is guaranteed to be there for your family. You know? So, um, so that's like what I tell everybody that I sign up, I tell them that. I just want them to feel confident. 
I want them to know, like, as soon as I get this, no one, I tell them, like, no one's going to call you up down the line and tell you, you have to fill out more paperwork for this stuff. No one's going to call you up 10 years from now and tell you your coverage is going to be gone. This is guaranteed permanent forever. Once you qualify for this, this is yours. Nobody can ever take this away from you because they're used to stuff getting taken away from them, you know? So, and they even don't get it sometimes. They, some, one guy was like, so how long do I have to pay into this before it'll pay out to my family? I'm like, that's a great question. See, yeah, like no, I, if I was a younger, I'd be like, what are you talking about immediately? But then when you get, so I, was, I remember I was, I was like, that's a great question. And that's why they set this program up. See, is today you enrolled into the program, it was $74 a month, right? And, and um, when, you're, when you pass away, your family's going to get $50,000. Now, um, if that means like, as soon as I leave here today, you're covered. So which means you can literally pass away this week and your family will get all this. You pay 77, your family gets $50,000, right? The, the, the name of that contract, guys, is called an aleatory contract. If you guys want to remember your uh, life insurance test, you probably forgot all that stuff already. <laughs> aleatory contract. That means that basically means something where you pay in a little bit, but you get a lot. So um, the thing that why to do this is, is you can say, so uh, I'm not going to go into too much on that. I could, I could go on a whole little story on the freedom of choice, but let's just say that just on a general note, that if you have $77 a month and you put that into, and let's say instead of doing this program that you're going to do here, Joe, let's say we just take that $77 a month we put into a savings account. And two months go by, you put $144 in there or whatever, $154 and you pass away, what's your family gonna get? They're gonna get the $154 that's in your savings account. Here, you put $77 a month in here, two months go by, you pass away, your family is $50,000. <laughs> what? And they have to pay taxes on that. And the bank account is taxable, and they're getting less than 1%. Over here is tax-free, and you're getting 4.5%. So that's why they set this up for all the members and made sure that it was available to them. Now, the main thing is trying to qualify. Everybody always wants to try and take advantage of the program, but unfortunately, not everybody can qualify. So I need to make sure you can even qualify first. And then I take it away from them, you know? So, so that's good stuff, guys. Um, uh, does this make sense what we went over? Make pretty good sense, right? Um, any questions? No. Questions on, on, on virtual? Can you got you? Well, we just got no questions. On there. Any <laughs> questions? No, right now. I can't hear you. I don't know if my speaker wasn't working or not. Oh, no, I don't have any questions. Can you hear me now? Speaker, same assistant. Are you what? Maybe it's a volume sound. There we go. Can I hear you now? Oh uh, yeah, I don't have any questions. Hey, okay, <laughs> loud and clear. <laughs> so. <laughs> all, right. all right, good. Uh, what time is it? What do you guys got? One fifty. Oh wow, we're ahead of schedule, man. We really had a schedule. I, I, I mean, I literally that's that's that, that was the lesson. That's what we wanted to go over today. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so I really would say after that, you know, it would be. Um, Proactive, master the proactive so that you don't get to the reactive situation, but be ready for the reactive situation too. Be ready. Um, you do not want to get to the end of the presentation and then they give you a rebuttal and it catches you off guard. Like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. You know, you're in a boxing match. You didn't get expected to hit in the face a couple of times, <laughs> you know, right? So, so be ready when they hit you. Don't be like, oh my God, I can't believe they, they said that to me. You should be ready for them to just go into the end. Be like, all right, now it's time to do closing. Time to close. Where are we going to go with this one? Are we going over here? Are we going over here? Do I have to go up a need? Do I have to go up for this? You know, and then, and then my, one of my favorite pro, you know, reactive rebuttals, even proactive, you could use this proactively before you even close, is you just say to them, you say, so Joe, Mary, um, if I had to ask, I ask all my clients this, 
you know, if I had to ask you guys, uh, what would you say if I, uh, if I asked you, what is the most important thing in the world to you? I ask all my clients this, and we think everybody's done it. I always say family, that's right. But if you had to put a price tag on your family, what would you say your family would be worth to you? Joe, Mary, what would you think? What would you put a price on your family? You couldn't. You couldn't, right? So you say they're priceless. So, you know, Joe, you know, um, we can't put a price on our family, you know. But fortunately, they were able to put a price on protecting our family, which is just $134 a month, less than a cable, less than a cell phone bill. But if I had to ask you, Joe, when do you think the most important time to start protecting our family is? Today? Yeah. Well, probably yesterday, right? So um, uh, what I say? So what we're going to do today is we're going to make sure that you get your foot in the door with the benefits, but keep it comfortable at the same time, okay? Most families, and if I ask you, most people out there, nobody is out there, Joe, uh, drawing up plans for failure right? People don't plan to fail. The problem is, though, is that they fail to plan. And that's what we're talking about here, Joe, is for you and your family. Now you guys are going to actually have a plan in place. And they call this the family plan for the family man, the union plan for the union man, right? So uh, the most important thing is making sure you can qualify for the benefits because everybody wants to try and qualify, but not everybody can. So I need to make sure you can qualify first. So Joe, Mary, were you guys ever in Alcoholics Anonymous or AA? Have you ever used narcotic sedatives or hallucinogens, any drugs prescribed, not prescribed by a doctor? Do you um, have any DUIs or DWIs? Any in the past five years? No? Okay, great. Do you anything crazy? Do you any do, any do anything wild like uh, scuba diving, skydiving? Skin, skin dip and skinny dip. You got skinny dip? All right, not skinny dip, but I just wanted to see what you say. Okay. All right. You know, and I just keep going through it. Right. But I always like make a little joke over there. Um, and then I start assuming the sale and filling out the application. And that's a big part of closing, guys. Big part of closing is just assuming that sale and filling out that application and just doing it. Just fill it out. And, and they didn't even say yes sometimes. They didn't say yes, but here's the thing. If I go into 10 homes and I just fill out 10 applications, I'm going to get a couple extra sales that I would have gotten if I just waited to fill like, are you guys going to do this now? All right, let's fill out the application then. When you're, you know? I'm sorry to interrupt. When you fill in the application, what is like, okay, so you're finished with the needs analysis. Now, when you're filling the application, like, would you just tell them, like, okay, let me just put the information, the needs analysis, and you're just literally filling it up while you, well, you know, because you, we said, okay, we're going to start in the board and then we'll put the information in the computer. Mm -hmm. So you would use that time instead of actually putting the needs analysis, start writing the application right away. No? No. So you wouldn't do that. No. No, no definitely. I do the needs analysis because you got to establish the need. Application is completely separate. You know, application is the application. You know, this is what you got to fill out to get the coverage. And, you know, so, but I use that to assume the sale. If that makes sense. Yep. All right, guys. Hey, I don't want to keep us here if we don't got any more questions. And I think we uh, knocked this out pretty quick today. So, good lesson. Good job. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, good, good job in training class so far. You got three more days. Soak it up as much as you guys can, uh, and uh, have a great day today. All right. See you guys. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Lindsay, I'm guessing that was, yeah, that was a whole video there. But, um, but yeah, if you have any questions, you can always ask your manager, okay? Okie dokie. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Bye.